Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting number 138, back again after a skipped week. We have a nice set of people hanging out with us in the peanut gallery, and uh, this is our halfway through November. Uh, I'm going to go talk about the agenda because that's the thing we do. Um, oh, by the way, these record meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to attend with us right here, right now. Uh, for you, those of you watching the future, hey, welcome. Uh, we're going to do a little bit agenda one. We'll do triage like we always do. Um, and then, as I hinted, there is a, um, a clean room a vulnerability security issue that we will talk about and a potential Wix 3.11.1 because, hey, why not another Wix 3 release? Um, that's what we're doing. And then also I should have put on here, but I didn't, uh, especially since we have a good set of people, we should talk about when we want the next meeting to be. Do we try to get back on our original two-week schedule, or do we do two weeks? Anyway, with holidays coming around, it's a good thing for us to discuss anyway. And then, as always, we'll open the floor for those people that are here with us right now to t ask questions and talk about stuff. So let's go ahead and go clear out some, triage some issues, because that's the last issue that we're triage, I think it's the last one, will lead us straight into the second uh, bullet point here of the clean room vulnerability. So, Bob, ready? Let's go. All right, starting at the bottom. Upgrading a product that includes an event manifest fails. Um, we're still waiting for a log file from this. Yeah. Okay. No response uh, in three weeks. Let's uh, go one more. Let's let's yep. just drop the ping on it and go one more. Yep. Line endings of new Wix proj are wrong. That's kind of a bummer. I haven't seen this myself. No, I haven't either. Um, I'm not sure how it would actually. Um, well, it's possible that you know Git is not preserving line endings again or something like that. Um, I was going to say, I thought machine. that was all taken care of, but yeah, I guess it would, it might happen just in one Except spot. I'm not seeing it myself. Um, I guess someone's going to have to dig into this to go see what it is. The XML comments are only line feeding. So, yeah. Um, Bootstrapper project. Oh, same for the other projects, too. All right. Uh, I don't know. Someone want to look at this? This is not high on my priority, but who would be great if someone wanted to fix it? But um, if not, I guess we put it in 4X and see if anyone wants to pick it up. Well, we're, I mean, we're not going to... I guess we could put it 314... But yeah, I mean, it's it's independent. It's in the templates. So if you fix one, you can fix all of them. Cause it's votive. It's in the votive. That's budget. true. That's true. Yeah, it'll kick in for everybody. Right. So yeah, it's like go get the V6, take it apart, look in the templates, see if they really are line endings, and then I don't know. We go do battle with Git again to try to fix line endings on it. But yeah, you don't actually need three issues. You just need votive. So anyway. Uh, I guess that could go. Actually, yeah, doesn't. It's kind of weird. It can go in the. Doesn't have to go in a f any X release. It goes in the votive milestone. Uh, yeah, that's a sign. We should uh, add one of those. I guess. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Like it's kind of that's an interesting. Thought. I hadn't thought about it before. Yeah. But, you know, we could release a votive thing any time. Right. All right. Well, Blair said he'll take a look at it, so we can give it to him and toss it, and I don't know, toss it four for now, barring anything else, and we'll come back to think about the votive thing sometime later. Failed to create communication pipe. Um, uh, this one's mildly interesting because it you, know, you end up with uh, the, it's the combination of sync and async custom mm -hmm. actions. I'm betting or wondering whether it's a problem with globals in the mm -hmm. in the host process. Mm -hmm. I generally agree with this sentiment. Um, so do we put it in four and see if somebody wants to work on it? Yeah, I'm fine with that. I mean, yeah, I, I could see this not working out for some very interesting low-level reason. Yeah. 
Yeah, cool. Interesting bug fix or bug report. All right, no mouse cursor makes the sun. Um, oh, our dreaded failed to extract files from cab. Ooh, I like what they did with the logo up here. Pixelizing that. Isn't that pretty? I don't have a mouse cursor, can't see it, but. Um, um, yeah, someone needs to go dig down into this one. Um, well, no, I think this one actually is pretty straightforward. Oh. Um, yeah, sorry. The, the the root cause here is, I guess, intentional um, uh, breakage of the file. Oh. If you I'm have... an unstable uh, internet connection. Yeah, yeah. So if you get bad bits in your XE... Oh. And it, I said, oh, well, just check the signature. Well, yeah, that actually works if... Um, um, Sorry, I misread this. He just wants a better error message. Yeah, yeah. This is this is it's a corrupt okay. file, but yeah, it's a it's a, it's a feature request to check before trying for real. No, basically. No, this is this is a you want the BA to provide a better error message than this. I don't know what I mean. The error message is pretty straightforward. I don't know what else it would do. Yeah, I, I agree. They want more control over this. They can write a custom BA, handle this error code, and do lots more stuff. So, I mean, the error message doesn't tell you which file you have to go fix. But if you were to re-download the whole thing, do it again. But, yeah. yeah I don't, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know what you can do though. I mean, if if it's an attached container, no, you have to go get the whole new bundle, burn bundle again. Right. How, how are you going to do that in the BA? Or are you no, just you saying could have a, error you could have message. an error message saying, uh, oh. "Dude, things are corrupt here. Go down like this file is corrupt. Go download it again." Or as I saw you mentioned, uh, uh, sign it. Well, well, and as he points out, it is signed. Because if the corruption oh it happens in the attached container right so if you if you look at Authenticode, I think if you go into mm. like you know explorer properties and do the dance to to check the signature, mm -hmm. that would show the flaw, but yeah. because of the way the stub is signed, if right. the corruption doesn't occur you know if the corruption's only in the attached container yep. You're, you know, it's not going to show up in the in the you know UAC prompt or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah. This is a. I mean, in the end, you're, this could turn into a. Yeah, it would be nice if, in this case, with standard BA, caught this error code and said something more. Right. You create a special error message to be more exact about the possible causes for this error. Because in the end, that's what it's going to turn into. It's like, yeah, your file's corrupt. You have to go try downloading it again. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, mm, yeah, okay. It's with standard BA if you want a better one. Uh, Jacob, the UAC prompt isn't invalid, isn't showing up invalid because it only prompts for the engine part and ignores the attached container. The UAC prompt only shows that part. Right, that's why I think if you go into Explorer, it's going to look at the, it'll look at the whole file. Yeah, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, I think, yeah, if you right-click and verify, however you do that, like you said, the song yeah. to do that. Yeah. Anyway. I'm... Okay. So you want to decline the the you know feature request and say it should turn into. We should. I think we can go put this in the bucket of, you know, feature requests of like, yeah, this is low priority for us. I mean, yeah, you we it is pretty rare. I mean, it basically comes down to let's go through and allow you to override every error code. The, the feature turns into something like in Wix standard BA, allow you to provide custom error messages for every error code that then can be localized, right? And so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Essentially yeah. building up an error table of all these error right. codes. Cuz right now what you get is whatever Windows gives us, which is not horrible, but not yeah, for this one it's actually pretty good. But it, it, it's not actionable. 
yeah, you're right. And now what? <laughs> right. It's missing the second and third sentence for the error message. Right, um, right. It's not a horrible first message. So anyway, that's the feature in Western VA is the ability to do more messaging on these error things. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Um, if we can find a loc string that matches a pattern for the error code, then use that, otherwise fall back to the system message. Right. And that's the kind of feature in the Western VA. And yep. I'm like, eh, okay. Yeah, someone could go write it. Okay. Yeah, yeah Jacob, that's the, the basically what the, the feature request is in the issue. No, we're not doing that. But yeah, it's well it's 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 not a it's not a common case. I mean no. we're just gonna be burning a lot of time, especially on really large bundles, on something that's not often a problem anymore. So the worst case is, hey, you do this, you have to wait a little bit, and then you find out that it's corrupt. You're like, oh, I had to wait a while to find out my file was corrupt. Yeah, okay. If you have this a lot, you should start verifying your files, you know, big files, you should start verifying them more. But it's not enough to force on everybody. The real problem here is the error message could be better. Yeah, could it, could a BA get to the original bundle? Yeah, through the original source bundle, whatever that variable is? Yeah. Yep. Because that way you could, if if the normal um, Wintrust stuff would check the entire XE, you could do it from a from a BA. Yes, you could do it from a BA. Yeah, I do believe you could do this from a BA too if you wanted. So anyway, I think the feature request okay. is no, and it basically comes down to yeah, a better. I would not disagree to a better error message. Yep. I believe in better error messages, but I don't care that much about with standard BA. It's like yeah, it's good enough. No, I right. like the idea of, of letting of letting you override it without forcing you to override it. Sure. It's a fine feature request. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I, you would say that being it being your feature request. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Didn't mean, if anybody else came up with that, I'd be happy with it too. Oh, okay, um, okay. The Craig is language. I don't know what this one is. Wow. Uh, I don't know how you, you say hit, that. Hit the link. I'm guessing Kyrgyzstan. That's a very small link, and I don't have a mouse cursor. Without a mouse cursor, yeah. It, I'm, I'm, <laughs> no. Um, I was right, Kirk. Oh, I would like China, the standard UI thing. prompts to be available in that. I am ready to do my best assist to translating the content and send a pull request. Oh, great. So put it in four and oh, they use three ten. Well, uh, can you specify a loc file from the outside? Yes. Yeah, so yep. they can do yep. that. So yeah, it'd be great if they want to contribute this to four. Okay, I agree. Be like, yeah, so this could be the, hey, I open this issue, and then a pull request is to follow, and we just have to say, cool, let's see your pull request. But I'm not going to be able to do the translation for you. Nope. <laughs> VS 2017 only installs if VS 2017 is run as an administrator. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, this person said they had to elevate to install, and I'm like, I don't know why you had to elevate. I don't elevate my v6 installs and I mentioned that this I don't I guess I forgot to say this was external or whatever it, so usually if, if, if you double click the v6 it'll usually come back pretty quickly and prompt for elevation yeah I don't have a like this has never been an issue for me so I don't yeah. know where his went awry but even if there would be like yeah so Go talk to Visual Studio. All right. Now we get to talk about the new issue. I'm not going to talk about it. Here, we're going to go. Bob, you stay here because we're going to assign this to wherever it goes. Although, I guess I've, it's mostly taken care of. Let's go talk about this new DLL hijack problem. In detail. So, here's the new burn clean room. Last week, end of last, no, a week, 
week and a half ago now, I guess, probably, uh, we got a report uh, at Fire Giant that there was a way to um, escalate uh, privileges using a burn bundle that was launched elevated um, in the user context. So normally when you launch a burn bundle, unless you've done things to manually launch it elevated or launch it from an elevated command prompt or hack the burn stub, which we definitely do not want people doing, to get your burn bundle to launch elevated, then um, it is possible for a process that is currently running on your machine to slip a, to DLL hijack the clean room. And since the burn that is running elevated launches the clean room again, it ends up being able the that DLL hijacked clean room now launches and will launch that malicious process's payload elevated. So this so again, if your burn is launched elevated in user context, it is possible for a malicious piece of software to slip in a DLL into the clean room and get it um, elevated. Um, we missed this. I think we were so focused on trying to get Clean Room to work around all the Microsoft issues um, that we had with it that we kind of fell back to uh, the the randomization GUID folder being enough and kind of stopped thinking of the attack after that. Which of course it isn't enough because you can watch file folders and do things enough to slip your file in there before we can launch that process. So. Um, a lot of people, including us for a while, were like, well, don't launch burn elevated. Um, SCCM or things that deploy that way probably will launch a system, and that won't be a problem because when you launch a system, you get a different temp folder which is not exposed to the user, therefore software running as a user can't hijack it. Um, and so if you don't launch your burn um, executable elevated, then everything's fine. Um, of course, we don't control users choosing to launch their burn um, elevated by right-clicking on it, or some people hacking the manifest, which can, don't want people doing, but they could. Um, but the real problem in the end is that if you stick a bundle in a chain, and that chained bundle in there is elevated, then it will basically behave this way. It'll end up launching elevated in the user context and then be exposed here. So there is a way in. Um, now, some organizations, <coughs> Microsoft, <coughs> um, don't take a lot, don't care deeply about escalation of privilege if it doesn't also come with a remote um, attack. Uh, so uh, it's it's hard to get them to move on some of these things, but we want to fix it in our systems anyway. So the proposed fix that we did, which I'll show you in a minute, was to, if the burn process launches elevated, then go create the um, clean room where the system temp folder usually is, which will be down in Windows, which is protected from a user process to being able to write to it, which means that this malicious process hanging around, waiting for a burn bundle to launch elevated, can't write to that clean room location and therefore cannot hijack the elevated burn. Um, so when we look at that code change, that's this here. Um, it's actually not a lot of code. So this is when we're creating the working folder, which is the GUIDed directory where lots of the stuff for the burn bundle gets um, extracted to to be used. Um, we check to see if we're elevated. If we are, then we go and find the Windows um, temp folder uh, manually. Um, it Unfortunately, is, there is no API to ask Windows what its temp folder is. Um, there is a system environment variable called temp, but you can't see that as far as we can tell um, as a user without manually going reading the registry where environment variables are stored, uh, which feels a little bit dirty. So our decision here was, thinking was to go and do the uh, manual. We'll just put it in the most likely place where the Windows temp folder is. I'm not even sure if you can move the Windows temp folder, how you can change. I guess you could change that environment variable and reboot the machine. That probably would do it. Um, but you want to make sure that that is ACLED correctly for all kinds of reasons. 
So um, anyway, as you can see here, it goes if elevated, then it will go and use the Windows folder and a temp folder in there. And if you're not elevated, then it will continue to use the temp folders, the user's temp folder, like it always did. Um, and that's kind of, that's the fix. So far, this has been working. We've sent it to the people that reported the issue, and they said that that was basically the same fix that they were looking at. Um, so we feel pretty good that this is going to be the right answer. And it comes down to we should not have, we should not have stopped. Uh, can you show me a little more of the code? It's not going to show me more of the code. That's unfortunate. Oh, there we go, finally. Um, we changed this to be a unique GUID um, and stop thinking about the attack vector after that, which was the mistake. Because, of course, even though you can't guess the folder, you can um, wait and hide and try to jump in there. So this will protect the issue, protect us from the issue. So the remaining question is, how, assuming people don't see more issues with the code, um, how do we get this release out to people? Um, it's straightforward to put it in with 3.14 and release another 3.14, um, and same with 4. Even though 4 is in a lot of you know change, we can slip it into 4 real quick um, and get that build out just in case people are you know shipping with that right now. Um, the real question mark is, do we go back and do a 3.11.1 release with this fix um, for people? I'm inclined to say that we should to get the security fix out on the least amount of change on the code from the last major release, um, especially since 3.14 isn't somewhere that we want people necessarily to move to um, now or stay at for any particular amount of time. It seems like we need to go back and give them a 3.11 that has this security fix in it, which I think was about the thing I called out is the only reason we do another 3.0.3x <laughs> release that wasn't the Pi release. Um, and here we are. Do we have any uh, agreement or dissension of my wandering diatribe through the problem in space and solution that we think we've come up with? Thoughts? And everybody's asleep. Yeah, okay. So Sean's on board with the 311 one. Bob, any thoughts? Um, <laughs> yeah, I have a scary one. Should we do a 310.4 as well? Oh. That wasn't the way I was expecting that to go. Um, well, notice I did hesitate for quite a while before speaking up. I haven't thought about it deeply. What else is in 311? Yeah, that's kind of the kind of the problem. It wasn't a huge amount of work or you know, feature work. Yeah, it's the vote of change. To get this security fix, you end up going through all the vote of change. You end up forced through the vote of change ready or not. And the MS build change. Which is that? Sorry. The In general, the Visual Studio 2017. Oh, right. I forgot about all of that. That was... Ah, I blocked that out of my memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't expect the three ten four is going to be horrible. No, I, it's the same amount of work as a three eleven one, basically. It, well, it's just it's all the work for three eleven one again. It, sorry, yes, it's it's additive. It's the build machine making it do the thing that it does to build from the a branch. Yes. Which, again, yep. is just what you have to do for 3.11. Right. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> it's a fourth build. I mean, 3.11.1 and, and a 3.10.4 would be the same, you know, 
one-offs, never to be revisited ever again until this happens again. Um, for 314, it's straightforward. For also fairly straightforward. Hmm. Who invited Bob again? <laughs> oh. Hey, you could have gone. You know, I was 14 minutes late. You could have right. had, all, had this all done. done. Yep. Would we again obscure the older belts? Well, Codeplex is going to do that for us anyway, I think. I thought it was going to be read-only. I uh, I don't know if how they're what they're going to do with the downloads page. Oh, okay. They were talking about making the whole thing available as a zip file, but I don't know what they. I don't get a clear idea what that meant for the downloads pages. Interesting. Um. Yeah. I guess a three ten four is probably a good thing. Hmm. Yeah, all right. So it shouldn't be, I mean, famous last words, but it shouldn't be much more work than a 311. Um, or rather, it should be all of the work of 311 just again for 310.4. Um, and the fix is isolated, so it should go back to 310.3 fine. Um, or require very small changes to work back there. And then it's just a matter of doing all the build process for the old builds twice, one for 310.4, one for 311.1. Yeah, that should work. Okay. All right. Um, it's probably the right thing to do. We are entirely too nice to people in the back world. <laughs> back. But yeah. No, this is one of the yeah, you know, I just I looked at the three eleven release notes to remind myself in addition to the painful things around MS build. So you can look at there there was a fair bit of churn actually in three eleven. More than again, you know, suppressed memories. All right. All right. Three ten four. 311, 1, 314, and 40 oh, will all get the 6. Um, so um, I, I know Jacob already mentioned that he looked at it, it looked all right. I think Blair said the same. Um, I think Sean said the same. And Bob, of course, has said the same. So I think that's probably enough for us to move forward with it um, and start those releases. So maybe I'll try to do all those release mechanics over the weekend so that on Monday we can have builds that we can push out the people and recommend them trying before declaring them actual RTM. Sound like the right thing to do? And we'll end up with just a series of <laughs> links to things of here, 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 and here. Yeah, do you want to just... 14 and 4.0 oh, will just do normal weekly releases of. No big deal. Right, right. Uh, do you, for so for three eleven one and three ten four, do you want to have, you know, a big period? Well, yeah, I I think we'll send it to Wix users. Like that's I I think that's one of the mm. things we should do. Um, and we'll send out you know there'll be stuff on the Fire Giant blog, of course, from these notes. But we'll probably send something on Fire Giant blog as well. Um, just kind of laying it out. My hope is that that's like it's like the one and done build. It's like put it out there. Yeah. People yeah. kick the tires. Um try to get all of you guys here to do that. Um, John's not here right now. He usually has a decent system to go kind of kick the tires with it. Um, see how the update goes. Um, maybe Phil has a chance. We'll see. Um, and then uh, just get feedback. Make sure that, you know, there's not something corrupt in the installer. Just, I, I, you know, going back in time and doing old builds should work just fine, but you never know. Mm -hmm. I, there's a bit of hand, you know, manipulations because we just 
you don't automate stuff you don't do like that very often. So, um, so just to make sure that it works, you know, and it upgrades over 3.10.3 correctly on all the people's machines and so on and so forth. So that's essentially, I think, the bake period. Um, and then we'll declare, you know, that's it kind of thing. <laughs> it's like, if you get this build, this should be it. Unless we find a problem with it, you have the final build. You will not have to upgrade again. And that should hopefully help people get to it that much faster, right? It's not like we're going to semver it suddenly and go, here's this build. Okay, now we rebuilt again so we can get the appropriate version number on it. You know, we're not going to do that. Yeah. It'll be the one. All right. Um, so I will we'll try to have all of that in place from Monday so we can start sending out those announcements. If not, like Sunday or whatever, we'll see how how things go if <laughs> Bob's around on Sunday and can proofread my English and things like that um, and kind of push them bits around and see what we get. And then write release notes. I don't know. Uh, let's talk real quick about next meeting. Do we... Um, next week is Thanksgiving. So, you know, American holiday that I, a lot of people said they weren't going to show up for the meeting had it been scheduled there anyway. So we could just shift everything a week and go to say the next meeting is in two weeks on the 30th. Um, if people want to do that. And then just reset the two week schedule. And just go to, that's the new two week schedule. Um, I think that ends up landing through December. Okay. And it'll be the 14th and the 28th. I mean, I don't know if anybody will show up on the 28th, but the 14th is far enough ahead of, you know, the holidays that we'll probably get a decent set of people yep. um, there. And then we'll we'll send mail, see if people want to show up on the 28th. I mean, I'll be here, but I don't know if things. All right, so we have a lot of people who think that's good. All right, so we're just going to um, skip a week and continue. You know, we skipped last week, so we're just going to continue on our two-week thing, and we'll call it the, the, the holiday shuffle. So I think... On that note, then we can go push this out, try to get it out. Where, today's 16, right? Yeah, so try to get it out by the 20th, the build out by the 20th. Um, who knows? Maybe I can even get it out by Friday. Yeah, but anyway, how about by next meeting, we basically pull the trigger on November 30th of RTM or not, right? Two weeks? Yeah. That works. That, that seems reasonable. And then we could release it on, you know, December 1st or December 30th or whatever with the mail. So, all right, so that's kind of our plan of attack. We'll get, uh, the goal is to have a 314, a 4.0 build, a 311.1 build, and a 310.4 build all out by Monday with this fix in it and send out the announcement mail to Wix users, Wix does, of course, um, but also Wix users just say, hey, this is a security fix. Please try this out. Um, they'll get the direct, the hidden links, not the RTM links. Um, or rather, we won't update all the RTM links. The point of them, they'll just get direct links to them. And then we will um, meet on the 30th of November. And based on whatever feedback we get, we will, you know, decide whether that's the RTM build. Of course, if we get some feedback, it's like, oh, there's a glitch in it, we'll fix that as quickly as possible to get another build out, again, with the goal to make the final decision on third, to make a decision on 30th to release. That'll be the goal. Unless we find something completely unexpected. I yep, that, that works. works. All right, that's what we're working for. We're working towards being done with this by November 30th with a big uh, push um, with a big release, or sorry, the bits being available on the 20th. All right. Other things people want to talk about. Anything else out there? I mean, it can't be as exciting as what we just talked about, right? Um, we will be in a meeting in two weeks, so we're on to our normal cadence again. Uh, two weeks from now, we'll work our way through the holidays. Uh, release on Monday. Decisions on the 30th. Uh, V4 has pulled that effects code that already been put into their own repo. Um, yeah, I, I think I've been through all those pull requests, and I know how I want to redo them. Most of them were not the solutions that were desired. There were things that were going to need to be worked on, so I, I agree with that. Um, and I've been holding off on burn to get all the burn things in there as well. Um, well, yeah. 
So I can't, I don't want to close them yet because I still want to read the code that they had to make sure I get it translated over. Um, um, so I don't want to close them yet. I need to make sure I have absorbed them and then close them. Basically saying, thank you for your pull request. Your code has been incorporated in the correct place. That was no longer where this pull request targeted, but it's all good. Um, I need to go through and do that. Um, so that's why they're still hanging out there. Um, feedback on the shared variable stamp. Yeah, sorry, Jacob. Um, saw that generally was like, yeah, okay, that mostly looks correct and then got sucked into this thing. <laughs> uh, and the security thing took um, priority and I haven't had a chance to go back and really sit down and think about the problem. Um, but yes, that will be, how about December we get back to that? Because I, I, I think what I saw is generally correct. I just need to go back sure and make sure I didn't miss anything. I don't know if Sean sent some feedback already or not. Yeah, Sean, yeah, the iTable is is going a different way, and I'd like to walk through what I've looked at doing instead of that and see what you think there, for example. That's a good example of something that took the idea of what you're trying to do with iTable and tried to come up with a different way of doing the same or getting to the same, a, a place where the problem is solved, even if it's not the same solution. Um, but that is a perfect example of changes, of many changes that were done in Wix 4 that were like this and this and that, and you're like, yeah, okay, but not that way, and yes, and, you know, I had this other idea for this thing that you couldn't see yet, that was because it wasn't done yet, and so on and so forth. It's just a side effect of taking so long to get progress on Wix 4, um, because, hey, Wix 3 keeps coming back. But, yes, it is a, it, it is definitely in the back of my mind to go tackle all those poor requests. Ah, Jacob wrote a lot. Scroll off my screen here. Uh, break apart the changes. I would only target four for your change, Jacob. Um, since there's enough change in it, it's a it's a good four feature, <laughs> basically. I don't. We shouldn't be doing a lot of features in three at this point. We just should need to push forward. Move the four. Hey, we got some good discussion out here. Yeah, nothing wrong with adding to those in Beetle and Dictoodle and such in, in in Wix 4. Although adding them in Wix 4, ah, uh, okay, yeah. You have to add it to the correct place in Wix 4, but yeah. We should talk about that when we get to that point of pulling that code. Let me get through this security. Let me focus down the security release and release notes and communication problem that I have ahead of me, and then we'll go back to getting some more code written there. Cool. Anything else going on out there? Bob, you got anything? Just just keep on keeping on right now, right? Keeping busy. Yeah. Yeah. This security thing was ill timed. Although they Are they it. ever? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I haven't thought about storing as a sub key or not. I don't think it's a problem, but I haven't really thought about it much. I guess my my comment there would be if you create a sub key, uh try deleting the bundle from the package cache and then clicking uninstall and add programs and make sure it removes everything. Sean, I don't know where that landed, the question of whether it's in, you know, shared, where, whether we're only writing to the registry or to the resume file. I think that would be a great thing to sort out on mail or, you know, if Jacob doesn't have it, answer in his document, putting your opinions into mail about which way that document should go. I think that's a great way to go about doing that. 
All right, we're going to fall into the hole of designing Jacob's feature, which I'm not against. Um, but for everybody else that is watching along here, the, the new news has moved on. I think this is now a great thing for Wix devs or other conversations that, uh, while well, I am inter interested, it's not where I'm at right now. Um, so unless there's anything else, I think we're going to call this good for this week. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks and make a big decision about a release or not. Um, and uh, we will uh, yeah, have yet another release. A 3.10.4 release. Who would have thought? Wow. Well, me apparently. Yeah. All right. On that note, you guys take it easy. I'll talk to you in two weeks. Bye. Bye.